In this video, we'll talk about transformations of exponential functions, and these follow very similar to when we talk about polynomials and other functions. So let's take a look at kind of general structure. So let's say we have an exponential function where a, b, c, and d are all constants. So if we look at b, we've kind of talked about this one. This is something we've talked about with our intro video. So this will dictate whether or not we have growth or decay. It will also tell us what family of exponential functions we're looking at. So it would make sense you know, if we're looking at 2 to the x. 2 to the x behaves very differently than, say, 10 to the x. It's a different kind of thing. So we look at different families based on whatever the base is. And that's what b is. That one, we go into a, quite a bit of depth on our intro video, so if you haven't checked that out yet, I highly suggest you do. But b is our base. Okay. A is going to dictate steepness. And if A is negative, so if it's less than 0, it's going to reflect over the x-axis. Now this is something that doesn't pop up very much in context, so most times it just gets brushed right over. Generally speaking, A is going to dictate your steepness. If it's greater than 1, it's going to make it steeper. If it's fractional, it's going to make it more gradual. That's usually what you're going to see. It's very rare that we see one that's negative, but it does happen sometimes. So it's worth being made aware of. C, very much like other functions, this is your horizontal shift. So it's going to move it left or right, and it's counterintuitive from what you would think. Negative moves it right, and positive moves it left. And if I was to put parentheses in here, it would be kind of on that top piece, so it makes sense that we're following our same format for polynomials and that kind of thing. So the C is your horizontal shift and D is your vertical shift. And this one behaves exactly like you think it would. Positive moves it up, negative moves it down. And we'll do an example to kind of put this into, into practice here. So here's an example. We want to describe the transformation from y equals 3 to the x 2, y equals 4, times 3 to the x minus 1, plus 7. Now notice we are still comparing the same family of functions, 3 to the x. It's going to be very difficult to compare any other way. It's difficult to compare 3 to the x to y equals 7 to the x plus 1. It's very difficult to do shifts that way. So we know that 3 to the x is going to look somewhat like this. It's going to be very close to zero on one side, and it's going to take off to infinity on the right. And we want to figure out, okay, how has this equation been shifted from 3 to the x? So if we're looking at this, well, we just start going down the list. This negative 1 moved it right 1. The 7 moved it up 7. And this 4 made it steeper by a factor of 4. So if we were to graph our second equation in comparison to this green one, well, it's going to go up 7. And it's going to go to the right 1. And it's going to go through this point here and just be very, very steep. If we were to do kind of a sketch of this in comparison. Now, largely we're not worried about making graphs, we're worried about just rough sketches and the idea of how has this thing been altered. That's usually what we're talking about. So we're not too worried about making exact graphs. We have graphing software for that if we really needed it. And that's transforms of exponential functions.